So they're trying to put one in my cell and the other one on my wing. The Spanish screws set up 10 minutes alone. Everybody tooled up is waiting for them. These boys are gonna fucking kill me. They're gonna set about me. These Romanian boys are gonna fuck me right up here. I have never seen fear in men's eyes. If Waeed never stepped in and sorted that out for me, and calm that situation down. I would have got stabbed up for that. They're covered in slash marks all over their body. But they're the ones that are raping you. Stabbing the fucking shit out of them. He, he nearly murdered this fella in his cell. I'm gonna get killed in here. Did you pay that in? Have you got the receipts for it? Oh, I've just fucked up. Oh, I have just fucked up. Free Bolivians, the free Bolivians who raped and set a light alive that 15 year old Spanish girl mate. We're watching them walk onto the module and we're like what the fuck, the whole place erupts again. The Gitano has gone out of my cell so there's just me and Carlos so they're trying to put one in my cell and the other one on my wing. The Bromies that run shit weren't having none of that mate. The Functionario, the screws, the Spanish screws set up 10 minutes alone with these Bolivians and the whole fucking module. The screw set that up. So these three Bolivians, they're getting their food. They're looking at, they're walking through the canteen area. We're all eating our food. Everybody's throwing shit at them, spitting at them. So they're trying to sit down. We're not, no one's letting them sit down. So the whole entire module is waiting on this landing for these Bolivians to come up. Everybody tooled up is waiting for them. They come walking up the first flight of stairs and the functionario are behind them walking them up. They go through a barred gate. They walked them through the barred gate and fucking locked it. Now, I have never seen fear in men's eyes like I saw in these fellas' eyes. The whole entire module surround these three Bolivians. And the first ones, they were reaching into their socks to grab blades out. French Moroccans first in there stabbing the fucking shit out of them. It was probably 10 seconds before the functionario came in and dragged them straight out. So I, I do not know what happened to them men, but do you think that we were right doing that? Do you think that was justified? I can safely say to you, they got off lightly there. That was the sort of day to day that you would have in Foncalet. So the next day I'm going out myself, I'm mopping all the blood up and shit, go about my day, have my breakfast. At this time I got a bit of money, so I've got cigarettes, so I'm sitting down, I'm playing poker mate, and I'm winning, bruv. I've started off with a 20 deck, and now I've got like 200 carton. Every fag, individual fag, was the currency for playing poker, you know? So if you'd raise it, you'd raise it 10 cigarettes or something Sometimes it would get crazy and people throw packs in and that. So you're just chilling there, you've got the Russians there. The Russians were always playing poker. You had all these boys behind, you always had a big crowd, everybody smoking all over the top, seeing what other people's got. There's a lot of hustling that goes on, man. So you've got to keep your cards down. So you've got the Rockies over there. Rockies never played, but the Rockies were always watching to see what they could fucking get out of the situation. It was mainly a couple of the French Moroccans, the Romanians, a couple of the Russians, and the Brummy boys used to play now and again. But it was a dodgy game to be playing in there. But when I found my feet, it was cool. The only two things I had in there was poker and chess, mate. That I used to play with the Russians and the, the odd Spanish geezer here and there. And I got pretty good at it, I'm quite an handy chess player. But that's a whole other story, what went down with the Colombians over a chessboard. There was a little Colombian gang, they were young, they were about 19, three of them, little Colombian gangbangers. Got done for a couple of kilos of Charlie. And one day he just walks over, picks the fucking chessboard and walks up with it. And at this time I was like, what the fuck bruv? Got right up in his face. Mate, give my fucking chessboard back. He says, my chessboard, it's the meal, fucking prick. Just cussed him out as he walked by. You know, it, it was these little free fuckers, man. They were they were ruthless little bastards, they were. Like, I didn't have much in there. I only had a chessboard and a bit of poker, mate. You ain't taking them away from me. If Waeed never stepped in and sorted that out for me and calmed that situation down, I would have got stabbed up for that by them free boys, for sure. Anyway, we're back at the poker table. End hand, me and Cosmin, the head of the Romanians, big fucker. He checks. I raise, he hasn't got enough 
to call it. He says to me, dame un paquete. Give me a packet of fags. I ain't never gonna see that again, am I? There you are. Throws him a pack of fags. <laughs> and I was like, whatever. I won the hand, owed me the pack, but we'll see what happens. He had all his boys there, pressurized a little bit, I ain't gonna lie to you, I'll give him the pack of fags, it is what it is. Later that day, one of Cosmin's boys, his Romanian boys, gets fucked up. Now, let me just say something about these Romanians, yeah? This is not going for all Romanians, because I know a lot of Romanians that ain't like this, but they were a fucked up bunch of people, mate. First of all, they're covered in slash marks all over their body, because they punish themselves in the name of God. When they do something wrong, they punish themselves and cut themselves. Not all Romanians, but these particular group of Romanians all had slashes all over them. They were shagging each other, they were paying to fucking get head of this transvestite prisoner. They were up to all sorts, mate. They were the shady ass motherfuckers, they were, man. You, uh, but you wouldn't want to get on the right side of them, man. They're, they're the ones who are raping you, I'm telling you. So anyway, one of Cosmin's boys gets fucked up by one of Paco's boys. I didn't even like one of his boys. No one liked him, he was a big bully running around. But anyway, he fucks up one of Cosmin's boys. The plan was, they're going up there to do him at lunchtime. So I had to go and see this. Uh, he, he, nearly murdered this fella in his cell. Prison life, man. So anyway, I'm thinking to myself, how the fuck am I gonna get my fags out of him now? Next day comes, he walks straight over to me, gives me my deck of fags. I'm like, sweet, sweet. I didn't expect that, but thank you. Gracias, Cosme. So now I'm thinking, I want a bit of weed. I could go to the Spanish over there, they're smoking it all day long, but I don't really trust them, and they don't really like me. I could go over there to the Rockies, but the Rockies don't smoke, but they're in there for hash. So I know that they got links to it, but I'm gonna get robbed all day long if I go to them. So Cosmin, just give me back my deck of fags. There's a little bit of respect there. I don't trust him as far as I can throw him, but let me ask him, no problemo. Okay, cool. Couple of days time, he's got a visit coming in. It comes in, it came in many different ways in Fonkelen, but he got it in on a visit, a regular visit from his bird, conjugal visits, that's a whole other story, conjugal visits, you're allowed there, so you're allowed to fuck your bird. You would have thought that saved rape and male fucking, but it didn't, but it was handy. So the day come, he had this visit, he came back and he handed me this block of weed, which was probably about, about that sort of size, about that sort of size. It was pollen. So now pollen is the highest form of hash and it just used to like, just sprinkle. We didn't need to put a liar to it or nothing. Just used to sprinkle, crumble, beautiful stuff. He said he wanted 500 euros for it and he gave me a bit of paper with a bank account on it to go and pay it. Right, I get on the phone to Daisy. Daisy, right, go in my room, back of my drawer, there's a thousand euros there. Take 500 and go and, and go and pay this in for me, yeah? So then she tells me that my dad has taken her to Benidorm to pay some Russian mafia for a phone that Tony bought. Two and a half grand sent my bird in there who knew fuck all about nothing to pay some Russian mafia geezers in Benidorm. So I weren't happy about that. Next day, I'm going to Cosmin. Tienes dinero? No. I'm like, okay, no worries, no worries. It's been paid. Daisy's going to pay it. No worries. It gets to the afternoon. Tienes a dinero, Cosmin? No. <laughs> no, amigo. And then I'm thinking, oh, no, fuck it. It's cool, it's cool. Get on the phone to Daisy. Daisy, have you paid that money in? Yeah, yeah, I paid it in. I paid it in. All right, sweet, sweet, cool. See you later. Come back down in the afternoon from the cell. I go to Cosmin. Bien? No, hombre. I was like, oh, shit. You know what? Then it clicked. Even if it does turn up, he ain't going to say, oh, I've just fucked up. Oh, I have just fucked up. And now I owe him 500. So I'll get back on the phone to Daisy. Daisy, I'm going to get killed in here. Did you pay that in? Have you got the receipts for it? Yeah, yeah, I've paid it in, Rick. I've paid it in. I'm like, oh, fucking hell. So the morning comes, nothing is still shown up in his account. Mi amigo, no dinero. No tango dinero. What am I gonna fucking do here? These boys are gonna fucking kill me. They're gonna set about me. These Romanian boys are gonna fuck me right up here. So now two full days have gone past me trying to blag this geezer. And I'm thinking, I don't know whether he's stitching me up or not. So two days go past, I walk down on the yard, Cosmin and his boys come walking towards me. 